Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here, and welcome to Balloon Market Buzz 4 PartyWorldwide.net. And today I am joined by John Bowler, the Chief Executive. Is that right? You are Chief indeed, Executive Greg. of yes. Bapia. John, nice to see you again. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's been a while since we've done this, yeah, and I should point out to everybody that even though John and I are quite close, we are we have a barrier between us so we are being very safe today we, we have been wearing masks and we have been distancing and um, but we have this this ingenious device um to separate us so so john last time we we talked was really at the beginning of the pandemic and we, we had a a zoom call um how's everything been since then how's bapia doing it's doing very well thank you yeah it's uh, we've worked hard to support our members um, we've put a few new bits and pieces in place for them. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a complete set of terms and conditions drawn up by a legal firm that yep. they can use within their business. I think at the beginning of the pandemic, people suddenly started thinking, well, do I have to give refunds? How does it work? Mm. And many of them didn't have terms and conditions that would stipulate what they could and couldn't do. Yeah. So we felt that it was a good idea to get these drawn up for them. And, you know, terms and conditions can cost you up to a thousand pounds to have drawn up now. So we figured, well, why should each member go through that process when we can do it for them mm -hmm. and just amortize the cost across all the members, yeah. which means it's negligible effectively and we, we will cover that. Um, and they now all have access to a complete set of terms and conditions that hopefully will uh, protect their business for the future and just ensure that they are you know they they people understand where they step where they are yeah. um, and what they can and can't do yeah and um, does that cover i mean nobody was covering pandemics no. in terms and conditions ever before no. does it cover that it, should it ever happen again well it doesn't cover pandemic specifically but what it does have in there it, it states about um non-refundable deposits okay um, and how they operate so it effectively rather than being specific for each type of potential issue uh, which you can never cover for anything if you look at the insurance companies now mm -hmm. they didn't account for a pandemic like yeah. this uh, so yes it's it's been done in such a way that it should cover as many things as possible without being specific yeah um, and if they're taking a deposit it allows them to either refund it or not depending on how they've they've dealt with it yeah um, so so yeah we have tried to sort of make sure that they are protected in what they do um, and it's a it's a general set of terms and conditions it doesn't specify for a particular business but we feel that we have tried to cover everything that people may be offering within their business mm -hmm. uh, some parts of it may not be relevant to individual businesses at all yeah but the details are there should they then expand into that side of the industry yeah um, so yeah we're very pleased with that and we've had a great response to it yeah it is interesting because i can tell you talking of costs and things we are getting all our recruitment and hr paperwork i come from an hr background mm -hmm. i've always done that myself but it's getting to the point now that really you've got to get it done properly things have changed since Absolutely. since i did it and I, it was only since april that if you have somebody start to work for you you have to give them a contract on day one, whereas it used to be within the first, I think it was a couple of months, yep. you had to give them a, a, a contract. Now it's from day one mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So we've employed a, an HR company and we've had our um, handbook, company handbook and everything put together and our offer letters, our contracts, 2,000 pounds. Yeah. So it's it's not cheap to have that sort of thing, thing done. And Absolutely. It's, um, yeah, that, that's a great benefit. But it's critical. It's, it's, it's important for any business yeah. to have terms and conditions. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you don't know where you stand and you don't know what you can and can't do. And likewise, your customer yeah. isn't able to determine what's, what, the, what they can and can't do, whether they can have a refund or whatever it be. Particularly something like balloons, because you're not, it's not something you buy every day. It's not something you go into no. a shop. Um, you're, the normal legislation probably doesn't cover things like this. And you know, it's very important, as you say, to, yeah. to, to spell it out for, yeah. for people. Um, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, so yeah, we've, we've spent our time, hopefully uh, successfully, trying to improve what um, we offer members. We've actually had a couple of uh, social media webinars by Sue which again went down exceptionally well mm -hmm. because people have picked up on some people who are already very uh, fluent in social media 
have picked up one or two small little points that have helped them. Mm -hmm. Others who are beginners or not really, like myself, not really very good at it, um, have, have just picked up a lot of information that's mm -hmm. helping their business. And we created some social media templates that they can use so that all they need to do is add their logo and bang, they've, they've got a template that they can post out. Um, we've also got currently one other um, webinar planned, which is with Jackie Ochitwa mm -hmm. uh, from Canada. She's going to do a design webinar for us on all right. the 12th of August, I think it is, which yeah. is a Wednesday, despite me putting that it was a Thursday. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she's coming along. We have got somebody else lined up as well, um, yet to be announced, um, and we'll do that as soon as we can. So we're trying to drive forward with just supporting members, giving them more uh, benefits, more information, more help, mm -hmm. um, because we think it's important now that the industry survives and it can only survive if people are able to change in, in what they do and move forward. Yeah. Um, so we're just trying to help as, as much as we possibly can. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you've got access to lots of people that are in the industry. Have you got a feeling of how people have been doing over the three? I mean, we've been hearing just people are busy. That's, yeah. How, how's it been from your point of view? How have people been? Um, again, as you say, they have been very, in, in the, the most recent weeks, they've been very busy, mm. uh, I mean, exceptionally so. Um, that I think, unlike any, you know, many people have seen before, but it's interesting how, you know, I've, I've been in the industry now for 30 years, mm. and every time that there is a recession, the balloon industry always seems to thrive. Mm. And I think that's really interesting. And in this, this situation where it's, we're actually, we haven't actually hit a recession yet properly, um, but with the whole situation, with lockdown and everything, that once it all started to ease off, balloons became exceptionally popular again mm -hmm. and people wanted deliveries. There's, there's no opportunity at the moment for, for any large scale decor, but people wanted deliveries. I think, think just maybe to cheer themselves up or to say congratulations, happy birthday, whatever it be, mm -hmm. they wanted to do something. And balloons are always bright, colorful, cheerful. They bring happiness and that's what people wanted. Yeah. It's what they needed, I think, Absolutely. more than anything else. Yeah. And so we have seen a, an explosion, if you like. Um, there are don't get me wrong, there are still many balloon businesses out there who are not, you know, haven't benefited from it for one reason or another. And that may be because they are still in, in some form of lockdown, whether that's for personal reasons or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but many, many businesses do seem to have taken off um, and really be picking up a lot of business, which yeah. is great news. It's yeah. fantastic news. So have you seen quite a lot of new people in the industry coming into the industry over this period? We have. And again, it, it, it's the same scenario through any uh, um, time when, when recession hits, mm. that I think the balloon industry is seen as something that people um, maybe can enjoy doing. They can get into at a relatively low cost. Um, and that I guess they also see that people are buying balloons mm. at this time and they think, yeah, let, let's get involved in that. Yeah. So yes, there are quite a number of, of new people joining the industry, which, and I know it's very, it's very easy to look at that and, and say, oh, all my business, I'm going to lose all my business. But ultimately, um, I think the more people see balloons, the more people buy balloons. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's if, if you, there's, I read a book on Starbucks many years ago, and it concluded that the best place to open a, uh, uh, an independent coffee shop is right next door to Starbucks, mm -hmm. because you will get the business. Yeah. Um, and again, you see car dealerships. Not very often do you see one car dealership on their own. True. It tends to be a whole street of them. Yeah. And I think it, business generates business. Mm. And if there are more people out there doing balloons and offering balloon services, then the more people will see it, they'll be interested in it, and they'll want to buy it. Yeah. And so it benefits the industry as a whole. Yeah, I've always had that view. It's it's a way it's it's going to grow the industry because, yeah. as you say, if people are seeing balloons more and more, it just becomes part of the culture almost. Absolutely. And yeah. what do you do for birthdays? Oh, you get balloons. And the more people that are out there doing it, it's it's expanding the demand. So mm -hmm. it's not about taking away somebody else's business. No. It's about uh, expanding that demand. And I'm I'm a big believer that, that that is the case, yeah. particularly in this situation, as you say, people want that little moment of happiness and joy and, exactly. and hope. And I think, you know, balloons can help everybody with that. So what's, what's the future? 
I know I asked you this three months ago. I say, what's the future hold? And uh, what, what do you think now that we've three months into the pandemic, things are easing off, although there is talk of a, a spike. A what, second what, spike. What do you think is, is going to I happen? don't know. It will depend on, on how the situation develops with regards to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the, the future is, is bright um, for the industry. And I think come next year, we will see a lot of weddings, we'll see a lot of functions and parties and celebrations, as long as the pandemic has eased off. Mm -hmm. And hopefully by that stage, we'll have vaccines, mm -hmm. um, which would be a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, everything that was cancelled this year, I think people will carry on with next year uh, my understanding and I know personally there are lots of weddings planned for next year um, on days of the week when potentially you would never have had a wedding ordinarily mm -hmm. um, so you know hopefully that will generate more business um, and the fact that more people are seeing balloons now through home deliveries will make them think yeah actually for my function I want some more balloons I want mm -hmm. some decor I want something to show that we're celebrating mm -hmm. so I think the future is good. We're going to have to just still get through these next few months. Um, I think Christmas will be very telling, just to see if, if what sort of parties there are in terms of celebrations. Mm -hmm. All of the corporate celebrations, I suspect, will be cancelled um, or just won't even be thought about. Yeah, um, which will be a shame. But if we can get through this, then I think next year does look promising. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then from there, yeah, hopefully the future will be even better. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But I hope, you know, it, it's going to take, we've got to sort of bear with it for a while and uh, get through to the other side. But when we get there, it should be good. Okay, fantastic. John, that is great. Thank you for that. It's been nice to, to see you again. And you. Uh, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll meet up again soon. Um, thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye.